Hello and welcome, everyone. This is another episode of Cardboard from Mars. This is Nima, and with me is my good buddy Nate. Say hi, Nate. Hey, what's up? All right, we're we're doing a, our second episode of the card grades. We're grading all the cards in terraforming Mars, every single one of them in the base game, for now. Um, so yeah, Nate, what's this? What's this about? Yeah, so uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the first the first episode. We got a lot of feedback on it, so that's cool. And um, we're gonna just keep plowing through them. It's it's kind of fun to do it, and we came up with the grading scale try to try and be a little bit more objective and formal. Uh, the the grading scale is listed here on the screen. You can check it out. Uh, Nima, do you want to go through that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So. Um, much like school, unfortunately, <laughs> we grade from A to F. Did you get so, a lot of Fs, Nima? So many Fs, man. <laughs> Just all the Fs. Um, so a letter grade of A is basically some of the best cards in the game. They're, we, we call them game breaking, essentially. Like if you get these, it's like, oh man, this is so busted. Uh, <laughs> so we're saying Except for don't cards. say that out loud because then people will know you got one. Well, yeah. That would be dumb. Uh, but you should rarely pass these, even if you don't want to play them. They're just like, they're almost like pieces of power if you play magic or something. And then letter grade of B is like, if you get this, you usually want to play it. Like, it's a really good card. Um, and the way we kind of approach this is comparing these cards to standard projects. So like, what like uh, a standard project is like like the basic kind of way to get something out on terraforming Mars, but it's really you don't want to do them if you can't if you can. Um, so that we're kind of comparing these to that. So like uh, a letter B card will be substantially better than a standard project. Uh, a C is you might you might play this, but you might not. It's kind of middle of the grade. Like it's depending on your situation, it could be good, but it's not like a must play and it's like maybe a little bit better than a standard project. Now, when you get to letter grade D, you, you more often than not do not want to play this. There's, there's a lot of cost into getting this on the table and it's highly situational. Maybe like it's, it's only good in certain like low, low situ, um, rather low probability situations. And then F, these are the worst cards in the game. You basically never want to play these. There might be like one situation in like a hundred where they'll be good. Um, so that's, yeah, that's our grading scale. So we're just kind of going to go through, I don't know, a few of them today. We're doing these in alphabetical order, if you hadn't noticed from the last one. But we have a few to catch up on uh, from the, the A category. So we want to just get to it, Nate? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean... Um, as with, with many things uh, that we do, um, we may not have thought through every, uh, every little wrinkle before we yeah. just jumped in. So we did forget a couple cards. So we're going to jump back and start with Adapted Lichen. Um, this card costs nine credits. It has a plant tag and it increases your plant production by one. Nima, do you have any thoughts about Adapted Lichen? Yeah, I mean, this is... <laughs> This is just one of those cards that's just like, okay, I'm, I'm bored, I guess. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it's it's fine. Um, nine money for one plant production. It's okay. There's, it, this card doesn't have a lot of oomph to it, if you know what I mean. It's not like uh, algae from our last video or whatnot. But I, I think it's like just pretty solid, I guess. What do you think? Yeah, I, I do not like this card. I mean, any like any of the plant cards that raise your production by just one, I, I think are like pretty mediocre. And I mean, part of the problem is that, okay, like say you do a little bit of math on this and you play this in turn one. Like, okay, that's pretty good. You're going to get a plant out of it. So you got you to gotta plant like a full greenery if you can save those plants for uh, 12 credits because you have to pay yeah. three to buy it. And that's a good deal. That's better than, you know, that's better than, than a standard project, which is 23. Um, but the problem is that there's an opportunity cost. So like in, if you play this on generation one, that's 12 credits that you could have used to, you know, do titanium mine or something like that, which, you know, would have boosted your economy by so much more. So yeah. I, I don't know. I just I, I find that these cards are just a little too expensive to be useful in the early game, and their their production is not high enough to be useful in the mid to late game. 
The one exception is if you have a bunch of discounts, um, you know, like um, uh, Earth Catapult or Anti-Grav or something, these cards that are like intermediate costed that are just a little too expensive, they can come down to a, a cost level where they become good, particularly if you need the plant tag for a card uh, like Insects or something like that. But I, I, I mean, overall, I just think, I think Adapted Lichen is, is for me a C and it's probably more like a D. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mostly agree with you there. Like this, the reason this car is not exciting is because really it's just kind of a little on the expensive side. Um, I, I think in general, like plant production. Let me back up. Uh, plants in general, greeneries are design-wise considered to be one of the more powerful aspects of the game. If you know what I mean, like the design of terraforming Myers considers greeneries powerful. Yes. So the the cards surrounding it tend to be semi to pretty expensive um so therefore yeah i think this card's a little expensive like by like playing this for 12 9 plus 3 i don't know there's no way i would do that what if um, you what what at what cost level would you call it a b um usually played uh probably just a few credits less than 9 like I think, maybe like I think... Five. I think if it got down to five for me, I'd probably play it. Yeah, at five, I would say it's probably a must play. Even at five, though, like, okay, so you get one greenery over the course of the game. I, I mean, it's not, to me, that's not, like, just busted. I mean, I think it's, at that point, it, you know. No, it's not busted. Like, I, I, I believe, like, mine is, is cost five, right? Like, to get the one... Steel yeah, production. I think it's four. I think it's four. But, Is it four? Yeah. So basically, you're talking mine territory, and that would, you know, that would never happen in the design of this game, right? Because, right. uh, so I, I think I would play this at like cost seven personally, but I also wouldn't. I, I don't think I would. I would even play it if I bought it for three, right? If I drew it from something else like AI Central, then. I would, you know, I'd be much more likely to play this. Right. What about that red sky? Are you thinking, are you starting to have <laughs> thoughts about what it would be like to live on Mars? Would you like that? <laughs> yeah, man. This actually reminds me a lot of, well, except for the lichen part, this reminds me a lot of the the Viking, uh, the pictures that, that got sent back from the Oh, Viking yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. The 70s. Yeah, yeah, I know, for sure. That, those are cool images. Yeah. All right, man. You ready for the next one? Oh, what did you well, get? I actually, I, yeah, I actually didn't grade it. Um, I, I, I give this a C. C? Um, I mean, it's... okay, we can agree that you're wrong. That's a D. But, <laughs> but you said C or D. So. <laughs> That's true. But I changed, after you discussed it further, I changed it to a D. Okay, well, you, you gave this card the D, I guess. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next one we've got here is Aerobraked Ammonia Asteroid. And this is a... 26 credit card with a space tag and an event tag it is an event and when you play it you can place two microbes on another card and you increase your heat production by three and your plant production by one uh okay. what do you think man what, do you, what are your thoughts on aero braked ammonia asteroid this is okay um among the 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 like quote unquote big space events like the, the asteroids and the comets and whatnot, I think this is one of the worst ones. Um, the 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 thing that strikes me as weird about this card is the plant production and also the microbes in a way like. And the I'm heat sure. production. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure what I'm not sure what strategy this falls into. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I don't know. It's it's okay. Like that's a lot of heat production. If if you're helion or something, that's awesome. Um, but it's just like I don't know like what the the one plant production is there for. You know what I mean? I think this card is just horrible. I, I mean, like, I, I and I, I basically, for all the reasons that you just said, you know, I mean, um, it just doesn't, it doesn't seem to fit any category. Um, 
I mean, compare this to the other space events. Like you said, like most of the space events just give you the TR bumps immediately, right? So imagine that this card, because it bumps your heat by three over the course of a game, let's say it gives you two heat bumps, okay? So let's say you play this on Gen 4, you know, you get 18 heat cubes or something, you get, you get two heat bumps out of it. And let's say you get one plant bump. So yeah. that's like pretty good. Like if the cards read, you know, 26 credits, event place two microbes gain a boost of 3d or tr now you're talking a little bit more like demos down right like it's getting into that range but the problem is like you're on the layaway plan here right <laughs> so it's so, like you don't get those tr bumps until later and that means that you don't get the credit generation from your tr i mean compare this to demos down and demos just crushes it right because you're going to yeah. get a bump of three to your economy for every turn after you played that plus you get eight credits from steel yeah so i i just think um just like you said this is just like a weird medley of cards and like in order for this card to be good you have to get max value on all of it right so like you That's need right. to get the microbes going you need to want the plant it can't just be some like incidental i got four plants and then you have to want that heat production and 26 man that's just a lot yeah exactly like I, a large part of why this card is diminished is because of those microbes right in the base game microbes just aren't a very good strategy if and now what what would you say if those two microbes were two animals for example so right when you started saying that i, I saw where you were going with that and i think it would be much more interesting at that point right yeah, because I do too. I mean, the only problem with that is that most of the really good animal cards are late game, and this is sort of like an engine card early. Yeah. So there is a little bit of an inconsistency, but um, there are like you could put this on pets, which which comes down early, and just having that other that other point would be better. Um, oh, I see what you mean. You know what I mean? Like the the thing about my uh microbes is that you you if you have a microbe generator this you could put these two microbes on there and get another tr boost but the problem is those cards generally aren't very good whereas you want to play that's what i'm saying yeah yeah no right and you want to play pets so i don't know i i think i think that if this card if it put five microbes on a card now we're talking right like imagine this card with five microbes then it combos yeah. with a bunch of things and so even then yeah. i don't think it would be busted Right. Like, you know what? I, I think this card, what I would do with it to make it better and a little more fair is maybe take one heat away, put another plant production on it, and maybe give another microbe. Because when you, when you, when you think about it, often microbe strat and plant strat do go together sometimes. Um you can build combos up where you've got microbes and plants happening. It's not common or even easy, but like that happens. And I think, I think if this card was a little more rebalanced towards plants, it would be quite considerably better. Yeah, I agree. I mean, a dumpster uh, player has a comment about adding a micro tag on. And I mean, this is, an uh, event. it is an event, so it doesn't, it doesn't yeah, stick around, but right. like, what if they made this card, not an event? But the, but then you got some tags out of it. Like that might make it better too. Yeah. I mean, then, I mean, then it might have some other synergies. Like it just yeah. it just doesn't quite do enough. Well, the 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 I mean, the space tag allows you to get it out cheaper. For example, if you have the right cards. Well, yeah, that's true. That is true. Like if you have um, some of the discount space cards. Yeah. Again, though, the problem is by the time you have those discounts, you don't need production. It's late game. That, that's why I think it, yeah. like it, if, if this card, like maybe they designed the card to give you like three microbes, one TR boost, and one heat boost, one plant boost, and hit three plants from someone else. Like if, if you could build a card that would be better in the late game, I don't know, whatever. This card sucks. Let's just be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, also, also this looks like New Shepard. Oh yeah, yeah. doesn't wait, it just wait, like going up wait, in flames? How? Oh, going, I guess if you like looked at it sideways, right? going up in flames as it re-enters the atmosphere. Wow, dude, <laughs> brutal! All right, so what are you what are you grading this? I think this is an F. I, I basically, wow. 
I can't. I honestly can't remember the last time I played this card. Like, I, I just think it's 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 not good. I, I mean, maybe if you played it on turn one and you had a way to use those microbes. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, th I think this is. I think this is a D. I think it's highly situational. But there is a time when it would be really good. Are you gonna give this the D too? <laughs> I'm giving it the D. <laughs> So okay, All there right. we go. What do you? I don't know. I, if, by the way, if you're watching this live, feel free to chime in with your your grades. That's kind of part of why we're streaming it. Yeah, for sure. So if you guys want in the chat, you can you can give this your grade too. Um, all right, Nima. So we're on to the next one. This this is going to be a good card. So we we you know last time there were some heavy hitters in that first episode. I feel like we had oh, yeah. quite a few. Um, this is this this one's a good one though. Here we go. Ah. Aquifer pumping. Okay. Yeah, okay, so um this card costs 18 credits. It has a steel tag and building tag. I'm sorry, building tag, yeah, thank you. And it allows you to spend eight credits uh to place an ocean tile. And you can do this once per generation, and you can use steel uh in the in the cost of the uh of the placement. You know, yeah, I I think this card's pretty good, and I the funny thing is that it is it is quite situational. Um, and if you do some math on it, a standard project ocean costs you eighteen credits, um, and so the first ocean that you place with this costs you twenty six, but then the second ocean you're now up to parity, and the third one you're starting to get a discount. So it it does require a little bit of setup. Um, I think, but if you, if you think you can get four or five oceans out of this, you, you do start getting them at pretty reduced cost. This, I think this is going to, when you, as soon as you put this up here, I thought I was like, okay, this is going to generate a lot of conversation because I think this is a, this is a tricky card to pin down. Um, how, when, when is this card worth it is what I'm thinking about. And I think it's worth it when you have only if you have good good steel production because this is an expensive card to get down uh 18 plus 3 21 money and then eight money every time you want to use it yes that, that i mean that's very cheap right but it's a good it's it's a high cost so like yeah if you're a uh, mining guild or interplanetary cinematics i think this is a really good card I'm, I don't think it's as good for other corps or other strategies. Yeah, I think your your comment about the you, using the steel is it, that's exactly where I'm at with this too. Like, if you have a way, you know, particularly like mining guild or or like you said, cinematics or like sometimes you just have these repositories of steel and you don't have a great way yeah. to use it. And this is just so good particularly early in the game because you can soak up some of those card you know some of those tile placement bonuses like i mean if yep. you're if you're paying 18 and then and then getting the you know two titanium bonus back like you basically played this card for the price of a standard project and now you're just you're just going to get discounted oceans for the rest of the game right. like that's pretty good yeah yeah i agree like this is this is a really good card for mining guild especially because now, you know, those oceans, one, you get to use the steel for placing the oceans. And then two, those oceans let you get more production. Yeah. I, I will say about Mining Guild that I used to have that problem more where I would end the game with like 30 steel. Yeah, <laughs> you know? right. Yeah. But what I, I've changed my style of play with Mining Guild a little bit more. And I'm much more aggressive about taking steel cards, even ones that are kind of marginal. Um if particularly if they have points on them and and so often the way i play mining guild now is that it's a little less explosive out of the gates but i rarely run out of steel targets and so mm. i found that aquifer pumping i i don't use it quite as much anymore with with mining guild but um i when i find this card to be the best is when you have kind of a slow or not very good set of opening 10 cards and this just gives you a little engine so that you're not just completely spinning your wheels you know yeah that makes sense. Um, there, it also is good with UNMI because it it gives you a cheap way to get a bump every turn. Um, yeah, that's true. And dumpster player pointed that out. Oh yeah, yeah. 
So I don't know. I think this is a cool card. I think they this is the type of card that um, I don't know. This is this is the kind of card that I think really epitomizes why you know Terraforming Mars is such a great game because th this is a very good, but it's it is situational. You know. I agree. I, I, I like to me. This is a. I'm gonna give it like a C. It's in the right situation. It's really good, but that's that situation doesn't come up very much. Yeah, and I, I, Dumpster makes a good point here, which is one drawback of this card is that um, it does let people know that the oceans are going to come down earlier, which allows them to have better information in the draft. That's true. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, a, a lot of cards do that, though, right? I mean, that's true. Like but it, but this one's, like, pretty, like, I mean, this is just, like, putting a label on there, like, okay, pick up kelp farming. Pick up, you know, a couple, you know, there's some yeah. of the energy cards and... Um, yeah, Lake Mariners or something. Do that quick. Well, no, Lake Mariners you don't want with this one, right? Because no, I'm saying that's that's telling other people. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, right. exactly, exactly. Yeah, I think this. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go agree with you. I think it's a C, Nima. I think it's a C, but it does have some upside. Yeah. And look, we we got an appearance from Q. Oh, the mighty Q. Hello. All right. All right. What's next? All right. So we're agreed. C. I'm I'm sticking with C. All right, here we go. Next one. Somehow this isn't auto popping up the way it usually does, but here we go. Archibacteria. Okay, right. Yeah. Nima, you want to introduce that one? Sure. Okay. So Archibacteria costs six. There's a requirement of you can only play this before the temperature reaches minus eighteen C. It's got a microbe tag, and it increases your plant production one. What do it's you think, Nate? Nice comparison to our first card, Adapted Lichen. I remember I when, I was, when I was asking you what, yeah. what would be the card cost before yeah. you would play it? I was just thinking that. I Personally, I think this is a better card. Oh, I think it's much better. Um, the question is, does losing the plant tag for a microbe tag change your does it does it is that a disadvantage or an advantage? And it's a go ahead. Go ahead. It's I think I personally I think it's a disadvantage, but not a huge one. Like, when why does that matter? Um, I'm forgetting the name of the car that is the asteroid that gives you uh, a bunch of plant production depending on how much plant production you have. Yeah, I I know your nitrogen rich asteroid. Thank you, nitrogen rich. It matters for that, but there's not a ton of cards where plant tags matter. The other one's insects, where you get a bump uh, to your plant production for every plant tag you have. Okay, yeah, there you go. Uh, but in general, like, yes, there's this global requirement on it, but that's not a very strict one either. We're talking like mid-game, right? Yeah, and, and I mean, clearly, just with, with Plantation, you, you want to play this card early, so the, the sure. global requirement really doesn't even make that much of a difference. Exactly. So, yeah, I, this is quite quite a bit better of a card, I think. It's not, like, super good anyway, but... Um, I'd much rather play it than the than the one we had before. The the thing that's one thing that's worth noting is that I do think that in general microbe tags are worse than um, than plant tags. But there are a couple cards in particular, and uh, yeah, Dumpster mentioned this in the chat. Advanced ecosystems in particular, it's it's often harder to get a microbe tag. So. Um, because the microbe cards in general are pretty weak. And so if you need a microbe yeah. tag, getting a microbe with a card that you'd want to play anyway is right. pretty good. And there's just a few of them. Um, you know, like I like the uh, Search for Life card, which has a microbe tag on it. And then there's Industrial Microbes, which is another one. But there aren't like a ton of microbe cards that I think are, are really that you want to play. Yeah, that's a good point. Um I, I mean, it's a highly situational thing we're talking about, but that is a, uh, you know, advanced ecosystem is a very good card. So this is one way to get into it. I think I like that. So um, what do you, what do you think? Uh, so when I asked you before, I said, what would you have, what would this have yeah. to cost to make it? And you said you were going to give it a B at six. You're going to give this a B now that you're looking at the card? I think I'd give it maybe a B minus C plus. I'm, I'm vacillating between those two. Yeah. Uh, because like the, the the tag's not as well. The tag is generally not as good, so that hurts it. There's a global requirement, which it's pretty loose, but still there is one. 
So I think I probably go C plus. So I mean, my brain is telling me that this card is a C, which means you know sometimes played but replaceable. But when I actually think about my actual play patterns, I, I really use it as a D. I almost never play this card, and I, I just I don't know, man. Like I think these these um, these one plant production bump cards are just they're just not good. I mean, like you said, I would be much more likely to play this if I drew it off of off of a card action you know like if i just drew this for free but paying nine for a single plant bump just i don't know i just don't like it in, in actual life well so I'm, I'm curious like what i'm trying to look right now is what does a card cost that gives you like two plant production um so bushes, like man okay so bushes like cost 10 there's a minus 10C requirement on it, and it gives you yeah two plant production and two plants. I mean, think about how much better bushes is than Archaebacteria. That is, I mean, totally. It, it for sure is. It's quite a bit later. It's more late game than mid, mid game. Right, um, but I mean, God, I, the thing is, the difference though is the opportunity cost, right? Like if you spend nine credits on turn one, that could have been used to pay for something that's going to bump your economy. So, like, if you can get the same amount of plant production out of a card from the mid game, it's so much better. Because at that point, yeah. you're, you're no longer trying to build your economy. You're you're just trying to, you know, at that point, you want efficient cards. And you know, essentially, this card is inefficient because it's it's expensive early. But it's not expensive. So, like, that's the thing with what you just said is bushes is an economy card and it's late game right so like that late game economy cards don't feel good for that reason no but, but this I, is, I don't think bushes is an economy card bushes is a point scoring card okay i, I mean i guess i'm considering anything that gives you production economy but if you, if you want to consider it that way you could well imagine this okay so let's say here's your two options you can play Archaebacteria on turn one and you can end up with 10 plants, okay? Or uh -huh. you can play Bushes on turn five and you also end up with 10 plants. The difference is that the 10 credits that you were gonna spend on turn one, you bought Titanium Mine instead. And you got, you know, an extra whatever amount of Titanium over the course of the game. And so by the time that you're playing Bushes on turn five, you're no longer trying to generate economy, you just want the points. So you essentially paid 10 credits or, you know, 13 credits with the, with the cost of the card to play a plant, but you didn't nerf your economy early. Like, like you, yeah. you, you definitely want cards that give you more than one plant production at a time because you can play them later and get the same benefit of these earlier plant production cards, but then use that X saved money for economy. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That's a good point. I rest my case, Nima. Okay, Count, counterpoint. No, I don't have one. I'm giving it a D. I think it's just a. I mean, I think it's just a D. I, I, I think. I think if I had, if you like, just based on the merits, I would call it a C. But just when I'm thinking about how it actually plays, it's a D. Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree with you, and I think about when have I actually played this card? It's I, I can't think of it. But then again, we don't play plants that often anyway. Um, I, mean, I mean, another way to think about it, Nima, is like. Imagine almost any set of four cards that you would get in a draft. Can you imagine taking this as the best card? No, uh, no, not really. I mean, so you're is... just never going to play it, right? Because you're early on, you're almost always going to take something else over this. Like there's, I mean, I don't know. I would consider it if I was doing a lot of ground game, um, but I would, I, I agree that I would prefer other cards than this. I, I think what I'm getting at now that we're talking about it is starting to crystallize in my mind. That, and I think that people do this subconsciously. The reason that you don't play this card is that when you actually have other options available to you, you gravitate towards things that boost your economy early. And by the mid game, this card just doesn't do enough. So I think that people like sort of subconsciously understand the argument I was trying to make before. And I, even if you haven't thought about it explicitly, I think that your brain just does it automatically. Like if this card's in a pack with Titanium Mine, you're 100% going to take Titanium Mine. You're just going to yeah. automatically do that. You're going to be like, oh, that card, like Archibacter is okay, but Titanium Mine is good. 
Yeah. No, that's fair. I I guess I'll I'll go D plus on this one. Okay. So rarely rarely played. There isn't a high setup cost to it. To be that's fair. true. That's that is true. And and I don't mean uh, like every card in the D category sure. has a high setup cost, but and, and hence the D plus, I guess. Um. So All that right. dude would take it with with catapult. Yeah, sure. Basically, he's and he's saying if it were it were at four, I think I said five was my cutoff to make it average. So I kind of agree. Like, I mean, if this card costs three, I would play it every time. Right. So yeah, it's interesting. All right, here we okay. go. Here's a here's a big one. Here's a big one. You ready? Ooh, I don't know. What is it? Oh man. One of the big, one of the big daddies in terraforming Mars. So. Arctic algae. So it's twelve, 12 Sorry, credits. Go ahead. Uh, it has a global requirement uh, that it has to be played at minus twelve, at maximum minus twelve. It has a plant tag. It gives you a plant when it comes into play, and any time you play an ocean, or anybody plays an ocean, yeah. When an ocean is played, you you generate two plants. Yeah. Also, you just get one plant. Right. And there's a plant tag. And dude, so, there's like some sick icebergs on that thing. Whoa, man. <laughs> it's like they're much bigger below the surface. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, Arctic Algae. I think we can probably both agree this is one of the best cards in the game. Um, so the reason... Well, I, th I think this is actually a little... It's a little situational, so... If you get this in your opening 10, this is amazing and you should always play it. Uh, and the reason for that is this basically gets you two greeneries, just this one card. Um, f from the oceans people play and also from the bonus the, the bonus plants you get from playing those oceans. So, and if, in case that it's not obvious why that's awesome, well, it's just points, first of all, but then it gets you into Gardner really quick. Yeah, I mean, I agree. And I just, I was so mesmerized by your analysis that I, I decided to eat that piece of cube of ice <laughs> right at that moment. Yeah. Um, I mean, I totally agree with you. I, I think that that's, and, and it's not, this is not something that's clear, I think, until until you've seen this card in action it's it's not obvious how good it yeah. is. Like, I mean, I think when I, I first started playing this card, I was like, okay, that seems good. I mean, you're going to get, what, 17 plants or eight, 19 plants over the course of a game. Um, but it's, you know, it costs 15 and, you know, you got to protect the plants. And I mean, I was thinking like, this card's pretty good. But what you don't realize is how much control this gives you over Gardener early. Yeah. And... Um, I mean, it is it is amazing. Like, if if you get this card out on turn one, you just you, it's so hard not to get Gardner. Right. It's like I getting a milestone plus two plants for fifteen credits. I mean, that's just crazy good. <laughs> yeah, and the and the and the really cool thing about that is, it's that's true even for corpse or strategies where you're not really going heavy into plants. Right? You don't need a lot of plant production to get it, nor do you need to be eco-line. So yeah, it's just really strong for that. Yeah, um, that's a good point, Nima, because like this is also it's because it's like a milestone in a card, it's really good in in for corporations that don't have an obvious milestone. Like some of the space corporations, like this can this can allow you to like passively be in contention for that milestone. And even if you don't get it, it puts pressure on other people to make plays that are suboptimal some, in many cases. And it's not, it's not always apparent how that works too, but um, you know, like suddenly if you're in the mix for a milestone and they were hoping to try and get multiple milestones, they now have to sequence their cards in a different way. Like, I mean, just playing this card just has such an impact. Right. Yeah, totally, man. And so I, what, one thing I want to explore is, at what point in the game does this card become a, a non-play? I like, think at exactly negative 12 degrees. <laughs> <Really? laughs> well played, well played. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha. No, but like, okay, you know, is there, 
you know, if it's like generation five, there's two or three oceans down. Do you still play this? Um, I, so at that point I would just look at the count of, um, I would just look at the count of, of extant plants and I would see if it comboed with some of my other cards. I mean, one, one thing that's nice about Arctic algae is that sometimes you find yourself in these situations in the mid game where you've got like six plants and you just have to float them to, for a whole generation or something. And it's just like your plants just get hacked so much. You know, Arctic algae, it, it allows you to control that a bit so that if you ever get into one of these weird plant situations, you can just play an ocean and then play a plant. And so I think there is some, some functional utility to it that goes beyond just the raw power. Um, but, I, but I also think that the optimal time to play this clearly is early. And I, I would play it early even if yeah. there were a couple oceans out. Um, but, I mean, if you can play this before any of the oceans comes down, it's just, it's just a house. Yeah, so for that reason, though, I think this is not an A. Um, I'm not even I'm not even sure if this is a B according to our grading. So like, well, I don't know. We so B is usually played substantially better than a standard project. That's yeah. I guess I could go with that. Um, but I think often, you know, we've drawn this card often and not played it. That's true. I mean, I think that this is a, it's kind of a combo card in the sense that, I mean, it's a one card combo, <laughs> but, but it, yeah. because it depends on the number of oceans that are out, um, you know, it, it does rely a little bit on the situation, but I, I would, I would think, I mean, I think this is a B plus for me. Um, I, I think this is, you know, Q brings up in the chat here that there are, you know, like comparing Arctic Algae to the aquifer pumping engine. Arctic Algae is just so powerful when it's good. I mean, yeah. aquifer pumping is good when it's good, but it's, it. I mean, Arctic Algae is like, when it is good, it is, it is dominant. Right. It's like, it's godlike. I agree. So I, I, for that reason, I think I'm going B plus. That's where I'm at with Arctic Algae. I think it's a B plus, but it does, it, it, it is it does require a little bit of setup cost, which makes it, uh, you know, a little bit of diff a little different. There are definitely times when you're not going to play this card, um, but and and if and if you're a beginning player and you haven't played this card, what I suggest you do is is take it and try it out, and I think you'll be you'll be amazed at how quickly you generate plants with it and and the impact that it has on milestones. It's 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 more than you think. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Um, there we go. B pluses from both of us. Yeah, it, interesting that we got we have a few. Um, uh, B, Arctic algae seems to be a bit divisive in the chat. Some people like it. Some people think it's like okay, but um, I, I mean, I think it's just an amazing card. Yeah. Okay, man, we got a big one coming down here. Um, oh, are you, are you ready? Are you ready for me to get on my soapbox for a while? <laughs> Okay, so like this is gonna be a two hour video now. <laughs> All right, here it is. It is Asteroid Mining uh, Consortium. AMC for short. <laughs> um I I'm gonna let you read this one because I don't even like <laughs> looking at this card. Just uh, Nate has a lot of post traumatic stress from this card. Um okay. Asteroid mining consortium costs thirteen. It requires a titanium ta or a titanium production in your um, economy. There's a Jovian tag on it, um, and then what it lets you do is decrease anyone's titanium production one step and increase yours one step. There's also one point on it. Okay, Nate, have at it. All right. The first thing I want to mention is that the flavor text on here is super weird. So it says. <laughs> <laughs> Your hold on the titanium market tightens. Oh, wait, I guess that makes sense. I guess <laughs> I was like, what's that weird? <laughs> Somehow in my mind, I was thinking of this as like like a Swedish person who was translating this into English weird, but as it turns out, they speak English better than I do. So <laughs> um Okay, I hate this card. I, I I'm it's it's clearly a good card. I got and I, I'm not I, I mean we can we can move on from that, I think, pretty quickly. This card's good. Um what I hate about this card is how high variance it is. 
and how punishing it is when you're on the wrong end of this card early in the game. Yeah. So, like, okay. Imagine the scenario... Anytime you're looking at a card, it's good to think of it as, like, what's its average use case, what's its best use case, and what's, like, the worst use case, okay? So... The average use case for Asteroid Mining Consortium is that you play this in the middle portion of the game. You don't really have a bunch of Jupiter multipliers. You score a point and you you take somebody's titanium and you get a little boost of your own. It's it's solid. It's a little annoying for the person that you hit, but it's it's okay. And you can clearly see that they put the 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 credit cost and the point cost on this card for the average use case. That, that's what they did. The problem is, when this card is played early, it's like unbelievably <laughs> good. It's like so annoying how good it is when it's played early. Like imagine, imagine you're playing Phobolog and you're playing against Saturn systems, okay? Happens all the time. Yeah, and you on Phobolog, you're like, okay, I got a sweet starting hand. I'm gonna play Titanium Mine. And then on turn one, Saturn Systems does this to you. They get a boost of four to their economy because the Jupiter tag triggers Saturn Systems' ability. Mm -hmm. They take effectively 40 credits from you over the course of the game because Phobolog gets the plus one. And they right. get plus 30 credits. I mean, it's our 40 credits of their own and a point yeah. and a Jupiter tag. So, like, this card in that situation reads another player loses the game you generate 40 <laughs> credits and you score six points i mean it's like come on yeah th th this is just a huge swing of a card like i think it i would say it's pretty swingy even in mid game um you know you, you might be losing you might be gain if you play this card you might be gaining something more modest like i don't know 20 credits and whatnot but it's still like that's really good um, and, and you know, some might some might say like this card is balanced by the fact that you that it it requires a uh, a titanium production. But man, like I think I see this card played every game. I like, guess it doesn't seem that hard to get out. <laughs> Would well, you agree with that? I do, and like I think yeah, you're right. Like the, the in their minds, they thought of the balance being a titanium production. What if it had two titanium production on it? Maybe it's a little bit better. But like the problem is that even the worst case of this card, okay, so there is an opportunity cost. You buy this card and then nobody plays titanium for the whole game, you don't play it. Even in the worst case scenario, you spent effectively two credits for the possibility of yeah. just completely demolishing yeah. somebody, right? Like right. like you're you're clearly gonna take that two credit um gamble. you know gamble or whatever. And often, if you have some Jupiter multipliers, you can just play this card on yourself at the end as a three-pointer. It's still good, right? That's, I mean, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's true. So let's, yeah, let's talk about that Jovian tag a little bit. That's uh, some people in the chat have been saying like they'd much prefer with a space tag on there. Like I don't think it needs that, right? I think that I, I think it's powerful enough as it is. I mean that that Jovian is huge, right? Like that's. That can be worth three to, I don't know, three to five points on its own, something like that, on yeah. top of the one point that's already on the card, on top of possibly ruining someone's game. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that, that like basically, if you're going to leave a Jovian tag on there, I think it needs to be actually negative one point, right? Because mm. then, then at the end... If, even if you it combos with your Joby and stuff, you might get a point or two out of it, but it's not like gonna be a four or five pointer. Yeah. And or if they got rid of the Jovian altogether and they just put a space tag, then I think it'd be fair at zero points. Yeah. I mean, think about this compared to um what's the one the steel the one that takes your steel? Um I think it's just the Oh. Is yeah, it just mining it consortium? Is. I think it's it's basically um, I think it's just mining consortium, but basically you take a steal from somebody and and you gain one. That card has no points on it and it doesn't have a useful tag. Mm. That card seems fair. I don't play it that often, and when people hit me with it, it's like okay, whatever, you got me. It's like, 
But this one, the fact that you get a point with it, and it's the, I, uh, it's just, it, oh, I hate this. Ugh, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm like vomiting in my mouth. <laughs> just bile is coming up. Okay, well, let's, I mean, let's begin the difficult process of grading it. So, like, we have to grade it as though we're, we want to play it, though, right? Not based off of, like, how much we hate it. I think this card's a B plus. I, I it's just it it's just a B plus. It's it's um it's not an A because there are times there are times when you don't play it. But the problem is w- when it's good, it, it it can just like completely nerf somebody. I, I mean, it's just yeah. So by our scale, we we say A is a game breaking card. This can be game breaking. Um, so I'm wondering where I'm going with it. Um, I, I might give it an A minus, man. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I mean, I'm with you. I, it's an A minus. I mean, it, it's, it's an A minus. I agree. It, it's just so busted when you play it. Um, oh, I hate this card. And <laughs> I, you know, like, I, 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 let me, let me like s- try to summarize your feelings towards it. If I can, I think I think you you play the game around this card. I do. I, I will sometimes not even do titanium production early because of this card. Right. Um. So I don't know. This is sort of a tough card to grade, but like I, based off of what we've seen this card do, I think I'm gonna go to a minus. I mean, part of it is this, Nima. It's that. There are a lot of cards in the game that have re- reproducible effects, but there are, there are a few cards in the game that are unique, and the impact that this card has on the game is unique. Yeah. If you pass this card, like you're not getting another chance at this sort of effect. I mean, there's Mining Consortium, which just isn't isn't even in the same ballpark. Yeah. And I think that for that reason, even though. There will be time. I mean, most of the time, I think of an A as being a card you're going to play like every time. Yeah. And I, and yeah. This, is, this is not in that category, but the fact that it has this just absolutely potentially game breaking and unique effect, um, I think it, it get. I, I would go with A minus. I, I would get. It would get there for me. So I, I think I, I think I'm sort of changing this to a B plus to me because like, yeah, it is game breaking, but. It's not like a card you'd play with any strategy. Like if you were, if you're playing, I don't know, Eco Line or something, you're not going to play this card. So, like, you know what I mean? Like as opposed to like Arctic Algae, which like you can play with any corp. Um, so I, th- I think I'm, I think I'm going B plus. Yeah, I mean, I could see that too. I, I don't know. I, I think I, this is the card that is the most likely if i were going to make an errata to the original card list this is the one i would take out yeah i mean there are other cards that are i think are you know better or more powerful um you know like we talked about uh, or we have talked about and we'll get to earth catapult which i think is you know probably one the best card in the game if you're going to choose one in your opener um that card doesn't bother me as much as Asteroid Mining Consortium. Like I, I think, I think it's. I mean, Earth Catapult's great. It's fine, but th- it's something about in a three-player game. It's so yeah. annoying to be the recipient of the the Asteroid Mining Consortium's yeah. you know titanium loss because you feel like all you did was be the person that had some titanium production, which which the game is incentivizing you to do, and then you just get completely destroyed from that. And I like I, I hate that feeling. Whereas Earth Catapult is obviously great for the person who has it, but then it also throws yeah. a signal like, okay, that's the enemy number one. These other two players can kind of try and, you know, cut cards from that person and team up and contain that person. And good players will do that. But Mining Consortium just feels like uh like a an act of nature like you you couldn't do anything <laughs> to prevent it other than not play titanium right yeah i agree uh, it just it, it just it, it, if more than anything if you get it it just kind of makes the game not fun <laughs> yeah. at least much less fun and that's a problem so this okay. is also highest on the category of most likely to create an insta concede on online. yeah right yeah 
<laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, this and Demos down when you hit someone for seven plants or eight, you know, like that. Th mm -hmm. Those are the most likely to just create an auto quit situation. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Have I ranted enough about Asteroid Mining Consortium? I think so. So we're getting close to an hour. Maybe one more card, maybe two. Yeah, we got a couple more here. We're at 50 minutes. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're going B+. Plus. I'm going B+. Plus. I, the last you said was A-. minus. I'm not sure where you're at. Yeah, I think it's just an F. All right, here we go. <laughs> it's an F in your heart. All right, man. Asteroid mining. Okay. Interesting card. So asteroid mining costs 30. It's got a Jovian tag and a space tag. Gives you two titanium production and has is worth two points on its own. So this is like kind of the first of like the big space cards. Yeah. I think there's a bunch of them that fit into this category. You know, just like big expensive space tag cards that that have a you know a pretty big effect yeah like this you know titanium is one of the most one of the best economy producers in the game if not the best and to get two production off of of it off of one card is very attractive um Looking at this card, I think it's pretty well balanced. There's a lot of pluses to it, though. Like the, the two points, the Jovian tag, and the titanium. This is a really good card. Now, what I'm mulling in my mind is, is it, is it priced correctly? And I think it is. I, I might go, a, I don't know. I might go a little bit higher on it, but... If you're Saturn Systems, this is just one of the best cards in the game for you, especially. Yeah, or Phobolog, too. I mean, Phobolog, Phobolog is just gross yeah. with Phobolog. But I, I think, I totally agree with you, Nima. I think it's worth just doing a little bit of math here. So let's say the Titanium gives you six credits per generation. This costs 30. So it takes you five generations to pay this off. If you played it on turn one, that means that you can get between 24 and maybe 36 credits of gener of, of uh, credit generation if you played it on mm -hmm. turn one, and you get two points. Um, and, and, you know, we've talked about this before in some of our other videos, but I think that um, a point's probably worth somewhere in the range of five to eight credits. So if, if you play this turn early, um, it's, it's quite good. I mean, it's really good. The disadvantage is that it is expensive, and so it, it's, its value tapers off towards the late game. Absolutely, and that's but that you know that's true of any economy producing card. Um, and then Q, you know Q's pointing out this is hard to get out early. There's not a lot of corpse that can afford this early. Well, turn but, one or two, turn two. I don't think it's a it's. I mean, it's a difference. But if you're if you're playing a card that generates you twenty credits, you're pretty happy. If you're going to play this in the first three generations, I think it's pretty good. I mean, think about our discussion about. Um, uh, um, acquired company, which we we gave a pretty solid grade, and if you play that on turn one, it costs you thirteen credits, and you generate thirty credits over the course of a game, so you netted seventeen credits. We thought that was a good card. Mm -hmm. Asteroid mining, even on turn three, generates you around twenty credits. So, I mean, th this card, I mean, two titanium production is good. It's really good. Yeah. I don't, well. I mean, it takes a while to to recoup the cost of the card, though. I mean, like a Phobolog, especially, this is an awesome card. But yeah, like, as we've said many, many times, some of the best cards in the game are space cards, and Titanium enables those. So yeah, it's really powerful. I mean, the thing about Asteroid Mining... Um... I, I don't I don't I actually don't often play it that early, even though it's quite good. Because I tend to prefer a more flexible, um, a more flexible approach. So I mean, and again, imagine if you play this card and then somebody asteroid mining consortiums you. Yeah. Ah, it's like you spent thirty credits to get a one titanium boost. Like you're definitely not winning that game. Um, whereas you, you think, I mean, like titanium mine, I'm much more likely to play early because, like, okay, somebody hits that, but it, at least it only costs you ten credits to get it down. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm, 
this kind of puts all your eggs in one basket. And then the other problem is that people are clearly going to cut Jovians from you because yeah. you have titanium production and a tag. So I, I don't know. I think this card, it's powerful. I think it's good. I, I don't think it's like awesome, but I, I think it's, I think it's a B minus for me. I think it's, it's quite good. You're going to play it a lot, particularly if you get it early. Um, it has a power effect effect on the game. It does have some drawbacks. Okay, yeah, I, th I think that's fair. I I probably go solid B. Um, it's like as far as raw production goes, it's really one of the best cards I'd say in the game. Yeah, so. and this this is also a card that can save you. Like, let's say you you're you forced to play like a space corp, just because that's what you your options were, and your opening ten cards aren't very good, and then somehow you open this up on turn two. You're yeah. just like, oh snap! You yeah. know, like you're you're in it. You know, so like this is a card that because it has such a big effect and it's in one card, it does have the option to save you when when things aren't going well uh, early. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Well, uh, there you go. Asteroid mining. What? Uh, I see some B uh, B minuses. What else do you guys think about this one? Well, what's next, Nate? All right, what do you think? Last card? Sure. Okay. So uh, last card for this session. Um, what do we got here? Asteroid. Asteroid. So this one's uh, 14 credits. It's a space event. And um, it raises the heat by one. It, it pays you back two titanium cubes, and you get to hit three plants from another player. Mm. Um, and um, there you have it. What do you think? Um, really solid card, I think. Uh, it, it, like you said, it pays itself back, which is super nice. Um, not obviously not all the way. That would be crazy, but like it, it, its impact isn't huge, right? This is essentially a really a souped up standard project. Um. What's what do you like? Where are you at with the the general concept of hitting plants these days? Oh, I think like, it's, it's great. Yeah, yeah. You still you okay? So you still think it's great? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Just thinking to myself right now, um, what its effect is like. You know, for most of the time I've been playing this game, I think it's you know hitting plants can be pretty devastating. Um. I think, and yeah, I, th I think the way that you characterize this is like a souped up standard project is, is a really good way to think about this. Um, but it, it, that's its baseline. And when you include all of the other cards that combo with this, it can just be yeah. really, it, it's not, it's never going to be busted because the effect is pretty small, no. like you said, but it's just very efficient. So like if you have media group or you have optimal arrow breaking or you mm -hmm. have a discount card or some of the space discounts, I mean, I, I've played Asteroid for like, two credits before you know like you just you've got optimal arrow breaking going and media group and like maybe one of the space discounts and you get two titanium back and you're like oh that's free like to, some to, well, and... or even to the point where it pays you <laughs> completely i mean it's and i so i think that this is like this is like the kind of card that acts as the glue for a lot of different synergies in the game and and that makes it good um it's not a card that you're going to like take super early if you have to do other things or you're prioritizing other things, but you're very happy to see this card, particularly if you passively draw it with card draw, when you have some of these other combos going, you're just like, oh, nice. Like there, that's a point. And, and, and it's not only a point, but the three plants, I mean, that could be the difference for somebody getting another plant at the end of the game. And most plants are worth at least three points. So yeah. I mean this this card this card's good. Yeah, I think that that is a powerful amount of plants to get rid of. I think like I agree. If if this was one plant or two plants, I'd be like, I think it was still a pretty good card. But three is quite good. Uh, Private saying it's an A plus hate card. Uh, he would know, so <laughs> I, I, I believe that. Yeah, asteroid. I mean, it, this is a um, you know, it's not a um, it's not flashy. You know, it's not. No. It's it's it's, it's kind of like the Honda. It's like a Honda. <laughs> Just you know? dependable. It's yeah. going to get you there. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. you know, um, 
So I, I give Asteroid. Uh, I mean, it's 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 a it's a C plus B minus. I think it's um, you know, if if B is just says usually played, I think this card usually gets played. Yeah. And and I agree with you that it's it's not on its face better than a standard project, but it usually well, is when you play it. No, I, I think on its face it is better than a standard project, just not like a ton better. Right, right. Um, but usually when you play it, it is it is quite a bit better than a standard project because yeah. you have some other value that you're getting from it. Yeah, I I, I think I go B on this one. Yeah. Um, is that what you get? I give it a B minus C plus. I think. I mean, yeah, it's a B. I think it's a B minus, basically. Like it, it usually gets played. It's better than a standard project, um, but its impact is not enormous. So I don't think it's yeah. an A. No, I, I totally agree with that. That's it. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I think that'll do it for this time, right? I think that's it. Um, you know, Nima, that was fun uh, getting our second one out there. I'll. Um, you know, we'll get the thumbnails going. If you guys have uh, comments, uh, please please uh, throw them down there in the in the chat on the YouTube channel. Um, we got some great comments on the first video, Nima. It was a pretty interesting discussion, and we did we yeah. did address some heavy hitters in that in that episode. Yeah, there was, <laughs> there was a lot of heavy hitters in that one. <laughs> yeah. Consider. But, uh, you know, like this is, as you can tell, we're going to keep doing this, and we're, we're having fun doing it. I think, you know, it's, this is fun for us to do, so that's cool. But, yeah, um, you know, thanks for watching, and follow us on Twitch and Twitter and YouTube, Cardboard for Mars. At Twitter or Twitter at Cardboard Mars, and uh, we'll sign off on YouTube for now, and we'll catch you later. All right, take it easy.